Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. We got a real special build today, and this is something that's near and dear to my heart. We have a Mongoose Funny Car. Now, this Tom McEwen owned Mongoose Funny Car was a promotion that was actually sponsored by Hot Wheels. You had the Snake, which was Don Prudhomme, and you had the Mongoose, which is Tom McEwen. Now, these cars came in a set, and I happened to have that set when I was a young boy, and I absolutely loved it. Now, I never seen the cars in separate blisters, but that doesn't mean they didn't come that way. Now, this car here was owned by a subscriber, and his mother found it underneath the refrigerator. It had been there for a lot of years. And we're going to go ahead and restore this car as best we can with maybe a few modifications. Now the car opens up as you can see. It's got a hinge in the back. Now you definitely don't want to take this hinge apart if you can absolutely help it because it's a pain in the butt to get it back together and work properly. Now the two inside pieces, the roll cage that I just took out, and this piece in the front had the posts that you use when you raise the car up to hold it open. It looks like a small uh, ladder bar. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace both of these. Now the roll cage looks good, but that front piece is definitely broken. The interior looks good as far as the suspension for the car, but it does look a little bit brittle. So I think I may take the engine out which is holding in the suspension and the wheels. And we're going to do our best to make it look a lot better. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. I taped up the bottom piece because I wasn't really sure how I was going to attack this yet. Now, I used the citrus strip, or the embalming fluid as I call it, to strip the paint off. And it turns out that this paint was added on later by someone else. It was really thick and it was really rubbery. So somebody else had painted over this car. I did get all the paint off, or most of it anyways, but I'm going to have to do a little bit better because the body is in really sad shape. So we're going to go ahead and take the wheels off and we're going to take that engine out and do our best to make this car look good again. I've got a little bit of bending that I'm going to have to do with a hammer or some pliers or something because the hood looks like it's a little bit crushed. There we go. We got the engine out. We'll screw that back in for sure. And here's the interior. This is definitely brittle, so I've got to be super careful with that. That's not too bad looking. Let's try and polish this up and see what it looks like. Here I've got my Dremel, and I've got this polishing bonnet on there that actually looks like it's a Scotch-Brite pad. Now you can get these at my Amazon Marketplace store with the link in the comments. If the link doesn't work, just copy it and paste it, and it'll take you directly to my Amazon page. Now, I only make a few pennies off this Amazon page, but it's a convenience that I provide to you so you don't have to search all over the internet for some of the supplies we use in order to modify or restore these cars. These polishing bonnets work good. If you put a lot of pressure on them, they are going to fall apart quickly, though. They're only good for about one car, so you got to get a, a good amount of these polishing bonnets if you plan on using them. As I'm polishing the car, there are an, a lot of pits and just all kinds of damage underneath the body so I'm not sure I wanted I really wanted to polish this up and maybe go with the Spectre Flame paint but I think I'm gonna either have to paint it silver first and then Spectre Flame or me maybe even go with the original enamel paint that was on this car when it was first manufactured and these cars were manufactured in the United States and in Hong Kong so you might get one with a clear windshield you might get one with a light blue windshield. Well, I've decided that I'm going to have to do a little extra painting on here. But I want to remove the tarnish underneath and maybe even on the car itself. So I'm going to put it in this Lime Away and Water mixture. 
and let that set for approximately three minutes. This I'm hoping will get a lot of the tarnish off after I scrub it down some and make it look that much better. Let's go ahead and speed up this footage and have your favorite beverage in hand and watch the bubbles as they work. Okay, it's been approximately three minutes. Let's go ahead and get that out and start scrubbing it down. Now make sure your desk is clear of anything you don't want to get damaged when you're doing this. I've got my latex glove on and I've also got my safety glasses on because you definitely don't want to get that lime away and water mixture into your eyes because it can definitely hurt you. So please wear and use your safety gear. I've got a brass brush here. It's starting to fall apart. I think this one's going in the trash and I'll get a new one. But it's definitely looking that much better. Starting to look a lot better. I think I'll probably take a, a polishing bonnet to the bottom at least. I don't think I can do anything with this top piece. Now I could dip it in the zinc plate. But the pits are so deep, I would have to do it numerous amount of times in order to make any headway on it. So I think the, the best thing for me to do here is to paint it up with primer first to fill in some of those, those little dimples and, and holes and things. And then decide how I want to work the color. Or maybe just use a Spectre Flame Silver Base from the Redline Shop and then go over it in the red Spectre Flame paint. I haven't really decided how I want to go here yet. It definitely looks a lot better than it did though. Yeah, that's in sad shape right there. It's going to take a little bit more than I thought. Well, like I said, the, uh, the body is in pretty rough shape. So we're going to have to decide how we're going to paint it up. I did notice on the back of the car that it had some casting lines and I don't like the way they look as far as being that rough. So I'm going to go ahead and take a file and file these down as smooth as I possibly can. And then once we prime it up, it'll look really nice. And here's the, the result after I filed it down. Notice how the, the hood is bent. We'll have to tap on it to straighten it out, but hey, that's what restorations are all about. Let's continue on with the fun. I've decided to go ahead and repaint the car in the original red enamel or the opaque paint. So I sprayed it down with the Tamiya Fine Primer, the white primer, and now I'm using the Chroma Air from SprayGunner.com. Now this paint is excellent because you can use it right out of the bottle. So we're going to use this Chroma Air Red and we're going to return it to its original condition and original paint job. So we're using this Chroma Air paint and it covers extremely well. I'm very happy with the results of this paint. I just started using it about a month ago and here I am trying to, to get you folks to use it too. So go to SprayGunner.com and check out the Chroma Air paints. They've got a wide array of colors and the uh, They've got a whole bunch of new colors coming out very soon. They've got metallics and they've got pearls and all kinds of new stuff coming out. So check it out. It's a water-based paint. It cleans up really well. It covers extremely well. And it dries to a matte finish. So when you're done and you put your decals on, etc., you're definitely going to have to go back in and color it, cover it up with a, with a clear coat to make sure that anything is protected. And once you clear coat it, this paint looks fantastic. So please go check it out at SprayGunner.com, the Chroma Air paint. Man, that is coloring, coloring and covering nice. Now, one of the good things about the Chroma Air paint is that it's water-based, like I said. But once you put down the coats, without getting too close with your airbrush, 
you can cover it up and, and you can dry it up with the air from your airbrush. So if you're in a hurry to put more paint down, you can dry it with your airbrush and get right back into coloring it and covering it some more. Now we're going to put down a little bit of heavier coats to make sure that everything is covered properly. I'm extremely happy with the way this product works. Now like I said, when it dries, it dries to a matte finish. So you're going to have to take that into consideration that if you use this paint, you're going to have to clear coat it. That's looking cool. Now we're going to come in and let it dry for approximately the rest of the day. Now we're going to come back in and clear coat over it. Now you don't have to at this point when you go to put your decals down, but your decals will move a lot better if you have it clear coated. Make sure you do your mist coats and do your tack coat. And get everything covered up in the wheel wells, top, bottom, sides, etc. That's coming along really nice. Let's go ahead and move on. Waiting for the paint to dry. We've let that clear coat dry. Now we're going to put on the decals. Now these decals here I got from Second Chance Breadlines. Now my go-to guy is Kenny Terry when it comes to my decals. I've been planning this rebuild for a long time and I had these decals in stock before I met Kenny Terry. So we're going to go ahead and use these up. Now Vince Scott over at Second Chance Redlines, he makes a fantastic product. So if you're not using Kenny Terry, you definitely need to use Vince Scott at Second Chance Redlines because he puts out a wonderful product and he does a lot of the OEM decals for these Hot Wheels. That looks really nice. Let's go ahead and put the stripes on the, the hood and the roof and the back uh, trunk area there. One of my favorite parts about doing the cars besides painting is putting on the decals because you're getting so close to that, that finish and the finish line is in sight. Now it takes a little bit of time to master how to put decals down but the only way you're going to do it is to do it. So have fun with it. Take your time. Now one of the things I always do when it comes to decals is I always try and have an extra set. That way there, if I make a mistake and I ruin the decal, I've got a replacement. So something to think about if you're buying decals, if you're making decals on your own, whatever. Always have a backup plan when it comes to doing this stuff. That's looking good. That lines up nice. All right. That's looking fantastic. Now let's do the one for the roof. I got that soaking in the water and it only, it only takes about 10 seconds in the water for these decals to build up enough wetness in the decal paper to release the decal. There we go. Line that up nice. And roll it out. Just get it lined up exactly where you want it. Try and work out the water underneath. Now on a smooth surface with a clear coated finish, it's going to move around a lot. If you've got the matte finish, it's not going to move around very easy. So something to think about if you're going to be putting your decals on a smooth clear surface or a matte surface. I'm not really crazy about the colors of these decals. I mean, 
back when Hot Wheels made these things, you know, you thought they were the coolest things in the world. But later on, as you get older and you look at the colors and the stripes, and you go, oh, man, they could have done so much better. But it is what it is, right? Okay, and here's the one for the trunk. Now, notice the direction the stars are going in. The point of the star is down there at the bottom. When you put your decals on the car, make sure the stars are going all in the same direction. And I mean the points of the stars. So something to think about when you're putting your decals on, not just a vehicle like this, but other, other vehicles, and make sure they're all going in the right direction. This last one on the trunk was an absolute booger. Just did not want to play. Do the best you can to center it up. Now if it gets to the point where your decal is sticking some, you can always add some more water to it so it will float it a little more and you can move it around. Now all we got to do is put the decal on this side and then the decal job is done and we'll let it set at least eight hours. Now it's just to make sure that the water evaporates underneath the decal. You don't want to clear coat over the top of it and then have that water trapped underneath because later on the car will bubble up and it'll come apart and you know you'll wind up having to do it again and it'll really make you angry and want to say a bunch of curse words. That lined up nice. There we go. Let's get the Q-tip and we'll roll the water out of that bad boy. Now make sure when you're touching the car that you don't touch the other decals that have already been installed because you can move them. Take a good quick look at your car all the way around. Make sure nothing is moved. Now I've done this before. That looks good. And that side hasn't moved either. All right, let's let it dry and we'll get back to it. Let's go ahead and put some wheels on here. Now the base here is incredibly brittle, so we got to be careful. But all the wheels on this are cap style wheels. So we're going to take our razor, work it over to the little lip on the, the cap, and we're going to push down with the razor, roll it back and forth, and snap those wheels off. And they come off usually incredibly easy. Now the cap style wheels, as I've said in the past, only come in two sizes. They come in mediums and they come in larges. Now we got the large meats for the back. We're going to go ahead and snap those on. Those new wheels look fantastic and they make the car look so much better. And we got the two medium meats for the front. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of super glue on this base as we put it back in the base to get it all ready to go. Now here's all of our parts. I've got the roll cage all put together. I've got the support struts put together or the support rack. The base and the body are all ready to go. We got to put the wheels in and glue them in. We've got the, well there we go, we got the roll cage. There's your support stack. That's nice. Got a brand new windshield. Now I found out that when you go to put this windshield in, you need to insert it through the back window. That's the only way it's going to go in. The engine was all polished up. Let's put it all together and do our reveal. And here's what we started with. This mongoose. And it, it had been kid painted or adult painted or something. The roof was all dented in. We uh, straightened that up, we stripped the paint which was kind of rubberized, we put new wheels on it, we polished it all up and put brand new OEM decals on there. Nice. And here's what we got to. Look at this beautiful restoration. I am so happy with this and this is for my friend Chris and he's going to love this I'm sure. His mom found this underneath the refrigerator where she works and who knows how long it had been there. But we stripped it all down, we painted it up, we used that wonderful Chroma Air paint from the SprayGunner.com, we put brand new wheels on it from the Redline shop, brand new decals, we got those 
from Second Chance Red Lines and Vince Scott, and he makes a really good product. It uh, and then we clear coated everything, and it turned out fantastic. I'm very very pleased with the way this restoration came out. Now, if you got some cars you want to have restored, contact me in the comments, and I'll get back a hold of you. I also take red lines in exchange for cash as far as giving me an old red line in exchange for me restoring yours. So contact me. I'd like to thank my Patreon subscribers, Grim Reaper Level, William K7 Robinson, Dale Johnson, and Matt Miller. Mortician Level, Air Warrior Coffee Company, Jake Rademacher, Jason Warren, Ray Berger, Ricky Montavo, and Sam Pascal. Funeral Director Level, Diecast Sheriff on YouTube, Double Beast Customs on YouTube, Dave Christensen, Todd Binney, Ryan Goldstein, Gravedigger Level, Aaron Murphy, Andrew Hitchens, Bob the Nice, Chris Decker, Grizz Flowers, John Holman, John Sellers on YouTube, Johnny and William Hicks, Keith Kripe, Leroy, Les Jenkins, Michael Oxley, Richie Ramos, Stacy Wright, and Trevor DeViz, Paul Bearers, Daryl Begtel, Gary Tasker, and Milesium 487. Hearst Drivers, Adam Bowen, Diecast Pirate, Jason Saylor, Jim Silva on YouTube, Joe Pierce, Pete Langford, Pintoni, Richard Reese, Richard Subtrello, Somo Diecast on YouTube, Scott Turner, Steve Terrence, Tony Hughes, and my good friend Wade Hendricks. Thank you so much for joining me here today. The link is in the comments to be a Patreon member. This video was brought to you by the Redline Shop. The Redline Shop offers a complete line of decals, tools to take your car apart, put them back together, replacement hoods, replacement glass, those beautiful red line tires, and of course, the world famous Spectre Flame paints. Fantastic products. The Redline Shop at www.redlineshop.com where red lines come to life. Guys, contact the Redline Shop for all your needs for restoring your old red lines and those wonderful Spectre Flame paints. Check out SprayGunner.com and their Chroma Air paints, and they've also got a complete line of airbrushes and airbrush supplies. Fantastic stuff, and thank you for joining me here today on Diecast Graveyard. <laughs>